The other day I stumbled across this animation on Instagram, which I'll leave a link to in the description, so make sure you check that out. But I stumbled across this and I figured we would go ahead and remake this inside Houdini because I feel like Houdini isn't as well utilized in the motion graphics as much as it should be because it is procedural and if you do things right, you can create some nice setups that you can then do whatever you want with and change things as you go and you don't have to redo any sort of work. And this is a super simple kind of demonstration of how that all works. So let's go ahead and go about creating this. So I'll create a geometry node here. We're gonna create a spiral. So this is from the labs tool set. So if you don't have this by default, then you need to come over to this plus icon. You can go to shelves and then I believe it should be in here on the side effects labs. Now I just um, installed it by default. So you can also do that with uh, Houdini, the Houdini install. I would definitely recommend doing that with whatever Houdini install that you have because the labs tool set is awesome. So for this spiral, we need to change some settings here. So this first setting of the radius is gonna be your bottom and then the second one will be the top. So I'll set that to the same, give it some height here. Let's kinda scroll out here and I'm also gonna up the amount of loops that we have. So I'll set this to like four. And now we have this sort of helix spiral going on. And this is gonna be the backbone of our object. So I also want to create the object that we're going to sweep along this. And this is where the proceduralism comes in. So whatever we have on this side of the sweep node that we're gonna drop in later is going to drive basically what our shape is of our object. So this is where it's fully procedural. So you can set it, this object to whatever you want. But for me, I'm just gonna create that little plus type icon or shape that we had before. So I'm gonna set the rows to eight and eight because I know that's what works here. I'm also gonna drop in a blast node and we're going to just get rid of some of these polygons. Just get rid of the corners here to create that shape that we were looking at. And then we wanna smooth out the edges here to give us some nice reflections in our material. And if I up the distance here, give it a few segments. You see it's doing what we want, but there is a couple of issues here. So with the material that we're going to create, the way that it works, we don't want a bunch of these like subdivisions going on inside of our object. Now I do think that it looks cool with a couple, so we're gonna keep a couple. So the way that we're gonna get around that is we're gonna come to our group here, gonna select basically just our edge points. And this is, like I said, just gonna smooth out our edges to give us some nice reflections in the material but it's not gonna create a bunch of lines to just kind of messy up our design. So that should be good. You see that we got what we're looking for going on now. And then we need to drop in our sweep node. So I'll wire this up, take a look at that. So from here, I can control the shape further just by dragging this down. Now if I look, you see that we kind of got some weird stuff going on. It's being swept along here, but it's not looking the way that it should. And the reason for that is because we need to drop in a transform and we need to orient this correctly. So we need to rotate this by 90 degrees. Now you see we got the shape that we're looking for. Let's also just give it some end caps and we should be good. Now for the post, we wanted to make some animation. So if we need to scroll down to this roll and we need to set this to dollar F and that's just going to set it to whatever frame number we're on. So if I press play here with real time enabled, you see it's slowly rotating. If you want to speed this up, you can multiply or divide this by a factor of whatever you want and it will do whatever operation you choose. So because this object is a symmetrical object in all axes, we actually only need to rotate this by 90 degrees. Now, because we're on frame one, it's already got a rotation of one. So if we go to frame 91 and I hit enter here, you're gonna see that it actually doesn't really change in appearance. So no change in rotation there. That's because it is the same exact shape in all axes, like I said. So you can create a looping animation just by rendering out 90 frames or 91 frames, I should say, and you should be all set just save yourself a little bit of render time. 
Now let's go ahead and drop in a normal just to make sure our normals are all good. And then we need to do our material here. So now let's just create our material in here. So we'll do RS builder. So we're gonna be creating this in Redshift or rendering this in Redshift. Now for me, you can set this to whatever you want, but for me, the animation that I created, I just set this to glass. I gave the reflection some color. So let's set this to, I don't know, I think like a pink may look cool. Give it some pink. I did change the IOR just a little bit, moved it up to like 1.6-ish. And then I set the um, dispersion to something around like six-ish. And that gives us kind of a cool look. Now, like I said, this is kind of gonna be your room to play with. So create whatever look you wanna go for, but this gives a kind of cool look. So let's go out here, let's create a camera. We're gonna go ahead and lock that to the viewport, which we're good. And we also, I'm just gonna drop in a light dome for our purposes here. I'm gonna drop the exposure just a little bit. Also gonna come into the environment and just uncheck that background so it's just a black background. And then let's go to our Redshift and create our render nodes. And we'll create our render view as well, or pull that up. And we don't have anything going on too spectacular here. I think that's because I forgot we need to set our material, which it is. Let's go in here, set that there, and let's refresh our viewer here. And now you can see that we got some cool looks going on. And this is where I said the lines in our object. So you see, kind of got these lines flowing through that is where you're seeing here. So if you get rid of these, if you're using something like a curve, you're not going to have those because they're basically with the dispersion, it's seeing that there's another faces of geometry in here. So it's basically thinking that it's gotta go through and disperse through another object. So that's why you're getting those, that kind of a look. But if you don't want that, like I said, just create it with a curve or something where it doesn't have any subdivisions in the middle. But this is also where the proceduralism comes in. So we can change this however we want. So let's go ahead, drop in a font for now, and we'll just set this to like the letter H. And I'll wire this into our sweep. And you can see that it's all updated perfectly. It's still got our animation going here. Now you'd need to obviously render out more frames here because it doesn't look the same in all axes. But you can see that just one simple change, we've updated our entire animation. And that's where the proceduralism of, of Houdini really comes into play in motion graphics. Super, super cool and just helps you out immensely with saving you some time. So you can create setups and stuff. Definitely recommend looking at how you can go about using Houdini to create your motion graphics stuff if you aren't already, because like I said, super, super powerful. But anyways, this was just a quick look at how to do some cool stuff inside Houdini, create those nice um, animations that you see on Instagram or whatever else, TikTok, whatever else you see on social media. But anyways, I do have a bunch of other videos on my channel on Houdini as well as Redshift. Do I also have some stuff on Clarice as well. So, and Cinema 4D, I guess. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure you guys check that out. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.